a story that we feel has particular relevance to our city today. And that story begins in 1883. In 1883, a young Hungarian immigrant by the name of Joseph Pulitzer moved from St. Louis to New York to purchase a small newspaper called the New York World. And in the process of that transaction, his imagination was immediately captured by a project known as the Statue of Liberty. Now, in 1883, the idea of the Statue of Liberty was already 10 years old. It was supposed to be a gift from France to the United States to help celebrate our centennial in 1896, but six years later, it was still being built in Paris, and in New York, there was a debate over the value of this great statue. The business and civic community were frustrated that this gift from France would cost the American people over $200,000 because we needed to build the pedestal. And on top of that, the economy had just been through the longest period of contraction in our country's history. 10% decline and an overall decline in the major skilled trades of the country. And in 1883, we're headed back into another recession. But when Pulitzer moved to New York, he saw the wealth of New Yorkers. He saw the opportunity to raise the funds. And one week after he purchased the newspaper, he began a campaign to raise funds. Anyone who gave, no matter the amount, would have their name and their story printed in the paper. Unfortunately for Pulitzer, his paper only had a circulation of 15,000. And even though he was able to inspire them by showing them the design of the pedestal, the campaign quickly failed. But Pulitzer realized if he was going to have any impact in his city, if he was really going to drive the things that he cared about, he had to increase the relevance and the influence of his paper. And over the next 18 months, he began an aggressive campaign to grow circulation from 15,000 to 150,000. And he used his paper to influence the election of 1884 and to elect Grover Cleveland to the presidency. But Pulitzer never let this image out of his mind. And in the spring of 1885, when he was reading his own paper, he read an article about how the Statue of Liberty was nearing completion in Paris and was soon ready to be dismantled and shipped back to the United States, two months away. Later in that same issue, we also read an article that said that the committee charged with raising the funds to pay for the pedestal had publicly announced their failure. They only had $2,800 left in the account to pay for the construction, which is far short. They needed well over $100,000. Pulitzer stopped everything. He told his staff, we are going to carve out a portion of our front page and we're going to start the campaign again. Anyone who donated, their name and their story would be printed in the world. And he began the campaign with this quote, it is not a gift of the millionaires of France to the millionaires of America, but a gift of the whole of France to the whole of America. Take this appeal to yourself personally, give something however little, let us hear from the people. And if you have time, I encourage you, go online and read some of these stories. They're absolutely powerful, people giving out of their poverty towards something that inspired them. And over the next five months, Pulitzer raised $102,000 from 120,000 donations, 80% of which were less than a dollar. Now put that in context, in eight years, the committee that was supposed to raise the dollars, they raised 182,000, but it took them 179,000 to raise that. Now, Obviously, they had to pay for the design of the pedestal, but that is a terrible ratio of fundraising to cost. Pulitzer, there was no extra cost. He used the assets he had in his paper to drive the campaign. I think there's two reasons why Pulitzer's second campaign was successful over his first. Obviously, he had the influence of his paper, but it was deeper than that. He didn't give up on his idea. Both campaigns had the same idea. They appealed to the people. But what Pulitzer realized was success was going to be determined on how well he could combine his professional strength with his civic interests. The second reason is that when Pulitzer began, he wasn't distracted by calling out the elite for not supporting this. He wasn't going to call to task civic leaders for not supporting this project. He recognized the roadblock, and he went around them directly to the people, inspiring action. And I think a lot of times we fall easily into the temptation of uh, calling our leaders to task for not supporting the projects that are going to move our city forward, when what we really should be doing is spending our creative energy to come up with ideas to move those ideas forward and inspire the public. 
Tom Johnson, the mayor of Cleveland 100 years ago, said this, the man who is worthy of being a leader of men will never complain of the stupidity of his helpers, of the ingratitude of mankind, nor the inappreciation of the public. And I would suggest this one change, nor the inappreciation of his leaders. These things are all part of the great game of life, and to meet them and not go down under them in discouragement and defeat is the final proof of power. No lack of leadership should ever be the excuse for one citizen to not move a great idea forward to benefit our cities, especially with the tools that we have available today in communication. Our economy is weak, yes, and there may be ideas that have not moved forward in your city for a while, but that doesn't mean that we all have, we don't have the opportunity to align who we are civically, socially, and professionally to make a major impact in our city. Joseph Pulitzer did this, and we're still talking about his story today. How much more impact could we have? It's time to stop making excuses. It's time to do the hard, creative, and fun work of moving our cities forward. Thank you.